Alrighty guys, today we're going to talk about how to do a compression test on your motorcycle. Necessary tools is a compression gauge, 10 bucks on eBay. Alright, no reason not to have one. Comes with this short hose here. Some of them have like a quick disconnect, this one didn't. Um, and also these little adapters here um, for this four adapter kit. I think I paid like, I don't know, seven bucks. Alright, super cheap. Um, and they can go, so they can go into all different kinds of bikes. So you're just going to screw it in, just like that. Hand tighten is fine. If you want to go crazy, go for it. These little rubber gaskets here, um, keep it so that no compression is going to leak. So we're going to screw this in. I have this spark plug from the bike that I'm testing. And you can just sort of size it up and make sure that it's the right size. Yep. And uh, then we're going to go screw it into... Uh, one of the spark plug holes in the bike. So it just screws all the way down. Until it's tight. Now there's a couple things you want to do before you start testing the compression. First off, um, you're going to get the most accurate reading if the engine is warm. If this is just a parts bike, you know, or like a bike you're working on or whatever, and it doesn't run yet, no worries. A cold engine is going to tell you basically what you need to know. Um, you're also going to want to take out each of the other spark plugs. Make sure you have a bitchin' battery, like a really, really good battery. Um, and you're going to want to hold the throttle open while you're testing it. So just hold it at a wide open throttle. If there's no carbs on your engine, then it doesn't matter, obviously. So there's two ways to do it, you know, depending if you have an electric start or a kick start. This bike has both, so I'm going to be showing both. Just turn it on. Hold your throttle wide open and hit your starter button for about maybe five or six seconds. All right. So as soon as the needle start or stops going up, that's basically as much compression as you're going to get. This cylinder is reading about 100. Um, that's rather low. This is a 78 CB550. You know, I wasn't expecting anything spectacular out of it, but it's fairly low. That's, you know, reaching the end of its life. Uh, this bike only has 18,000 miles. Kind of a bummer um, that, you know, somebody didn't really take care of it. But, uh, but yeah, you know, um, that's not too bad. However, the important thing is not so much what the uh, the compression is, but that all of the cylinders are fairly close to each other. You know, depending on the bike, some people say within 10%, some people say within 10 PSI, 10 to 15 PSI. Um, but like, let's say, you know, I had 155 on this one, bitchin', 150, you know, 145 or whatever, awesome. And then the last one was like 115, that's going to be more of a problem than if they're all four of them are low. So, um, so that's how to do it with an electric start. Now I'm going to purge it. This is my purge button. And uh, just do it by kick. To do it by kick, move this here. Um, you're just going to, you know, basically just kick it over four or five times uh, until you, you stop seeing your, your compression gauge go up. I'm going to drop this compression gauge for a second here uh, because... I need to hold the throttle open while I do this. Alright, so let's see what that gave me. That actually gave me a little bit more. That gave me maybe 110 or so. So, you can see that it's, you know, it's basically up there. What Your highest, highest reading is how much compression your engine has. So that's actually a little bit better. That's a little encouraging. I've got maybe 110, 112, somewhere in there. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, is you know, test all of the other ones and then see how they are relative to each other. So let's say, you know, you have one or more which are low, um, and you can know that they're low by comparing them to the manufacturer's specs. And you want to know if it's, uh, you know, worn rings uh, that's causing the problem or if it's valves or head gasket. How do you find that out? Well, what you do is you take, you know, some just regular motor oil and dribble about a teaspoon 
right down in there. You can take a syringe and squirt in there or whatever. Um, and then I like to shake the bike a little bit and that sort of disperses it around the rings. And then you do another compression test. If your compression goes up, then what that means is that the oil has actually sealed the rings very temporarily and uh, caused your compression to rise up again so you know that the rings are, um, are the cause of your low compression. If there's no change, then it could be head gasket or it could be uh, you know, valves that need to be adjusted. So that's just a really you know, quick down and dirty test um, to help steer you in the right direction. Uh, if you don't have a compression gauge, and like I said, I mean, they're super cheap, so if you're diagnosing a bike, there's really no reason not to have one. But if you don't have one, something that, you know, old mechanics will do is they'll just put their finger over the hole and, uh, and hit the starter button. And if you're really good at it, you know, and you, and you know what the, the compression ought to feel like, you can tell, you know, how, with how much force your, your finger is blown away. If you're able to keep your finger on it at all, bad, bad, bad compression. I mean, you've got it like down in the 50s or something. Um, but it should, you know, really jut out your finger like that. There should be absolutely no way that you can keep your finger over the hole. So that's just like, I mean, that's a test that doesn't really even tell you anything, in my opinion. You know, you really should get a gauge. Um, just because, you know, an indication of 10% either way is, uh, you know, is an indication of a problem. And, and it's time for you to, to repair your bike. So next time you uh, write in to your favorite motorcycle YouTuber with a question about why your bike isn't running, and he asks you, well, what's your compression? Do you have good compression? And, um, you know, you go to answer that question, you should be able to say, oh, my compression is blank, a number. Not, oh, my compression's good, feels like my compression's good, sounds like my compression's good. You know, even good mechanics can't tell that compression is good just by listening to it or just by trying to kick it over. Um, even good mechanics can't tell if it's off by 15, 20% or whatever. So just, you know, food for thought, guys. Um, if you're going to be diagnosing why an engine is running poorly or not at all, uh, just listening to it is not enough to tell that you have good compression. So I hope you found this uh, entertaining and enthralling, and I wish you all the best.